Is there music? Hey, hey, back with another Inner Circle preview show. I got my friend here, Sean Delaney, and we got we have like a million things going on. So we're just rolling into this show like, <laughs> let's see what happens. We're excited. <laughs> I think, wait, first and foremost, we got to talk about why we're just rolling in crazy to the show. We're in the middle of our workshop, the Next Level Business Boot Camp, and we're having a great time. Hopefully you're there with us. If you're not, well, catch us on the next one. But we're, we're talking about mission, vision, core values, and it's become more apparent to me this week how important this is from conversations I've had outside of the challenge. Um, so let's, do you want to talk about that real quick? Um, yeah, it's just, it is amazing when we bring new people into this whole world. And once they get past the initial fire hose flooding of information with there's an architecture and all business is wrong and all things are the same at getting them to that place of being able to listen. It just always blows my mind at the massive lift that we get people just doing three things that for them before were throwaway activities. Yeah. If they did it, it was only because they see large companies doing it and they thought they might have to, but certainly not leveraging it in any demonstrable way, right? In any recognizable way. <clears throat> and the lift that comes from it. And then the excitement that they get from that saying, if this is just one of 10 discipline, uh, disciplines and you, my business has gotten this much clarity, focus, and enthusiastic energy by this activity, what's going to happen after the other nine? Well, your business is going to be dissonant free, i.e. harmonious. And you're going to love it. Who loves you, baby? Sean loves this. That's right. Don't forget it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I want to tell you this too, because uh, this is a conversation I had yesterday that stemmed off a Facebook post like three or four weeks ago. So I, I posted in preparation with this challenge, uh, something along the lines of how, what do you think of when you hear the word strategic planning? Because typically that's what people use around this time of the year. And this, this one guy got back to me, he had a really interesting response. So I said, Hey, you want to come on my podcast? Um, which harmonious at lunch. If you're not subscribed, if you're not listening, what are you waiting for? Um, but anyway, so he came on, his name's Mikey. We had a conversation yesterday and it was interesting because he was able to, in his business journey, he was struggling and spinning his wheels and there was chaos in his business. And he stumbled upon the idea. This was like six or seven years ago. Hey, I should probably start with a foundation. And so we unpack this a little bit and I said, all right, so what, what did you do? Like, what was your process to do that? And he said, this was, we hadn't talked or met before. He goes, well, I knew I needed core values because that's how I would hire people. And I knew I needed a mission because that's the battle we're fighting. Oh, yeah. And then I also knew I needed a vision, a 10 year vision broken down into actionable quarterly outcomes that I could convey to my team. So we all knew where we were going. And I oh, sat there I, I and I did a little bit of that on the show. I almost cried. I was actually <laughs> smiling because it was just such perfect timing. But it's amazing how we overlook this and then we we develop the chaos in our business and we ask why. And we come, we reach out to people like me and Sean and a consultant and say, can you help me? And we still don't look where it's originating. But that's that's really what we're talking about. I'm also struck by for every one of those unicorns that we find. Uh, there's a hundred businesses that aren't doing it right. A thousand. There's a million. There's so many. So many. And so it's shocked when they do it right. But like we, like we said also, and I said it, you made me repeat it, I guess, um, another time. It's just that for, if you get strategic planning right in the way that we do it, if you get, if you get navigation right, let's use our terms. If you get navigation right, and you have like a score of 10 from our diagnostic, it is very hard to screw up the rest of your business. The inverse of that is if you get the element, the discipline of strategic planning, discipline by us named as navigation, and the elements of mission, vision, core values, correct, uh, it's very hard to screw it up. And if you get it wrong, it's almost impossible for the rest of your business to be running well. Like I... Every time when the scores come in, if there are not great scores in the navigation element, we can automatically predict how the rest of your scores are going to play out. 
And if it's awesome, it's very hard to monkey the rest of it up because you because you're already off on to such a great focused, targeted start. That discipline and focus runs through everything else that we lead you through. And we did that. We did that live on the challenge. I surprised you. If you want to go whatif.com slash navigate, you can actually see that recording. I surprised you. I said, hey, let's go through the bad and let's see what happens with these results. And and you took it step by step, discipline by discipline, and predicted every single thing that was going on with that business who you had never met and you had not seen these scores. So yeah, it's it's that important. Now, you're probably thinking, why are these two fools on the internet talking about this again? Well, the title of the episode is Three Tips to Improve Employee Engagement. Guess where that starts? In navigation. Imagine that. So we're going to we'll dive in and unpack that a little bit. But um, yeah, it's we talk about it consistently because it's that important. And like Sean said, one in my numbers, a million businesses get it right. So you're probably one of the million who don't get it right. And let's fix that. So and that's look, okay. You're in good company and yeah. in massive companies that <clears throat> I've worked with. Fortune 100 companies are missing it, and they're paying six-figure contracts to co consultants to come in and write that stuff for them, and they still like it, right? So, oh well. Yeah. So you are going to know. So let's let's dive in a little bit. We'll keep this one short because we got to get to the inner circle. Um, yeah, yeah. We have a cool cool group building. We have a lot of diverse businesses. If you want to join us, please reach out. Put the website on the screen. Whatif.com slash inner circle. Um, it, it's a group of disruptors looking to take their business to the next level. There you go. I'll point down right there. Um, <laughs> but the the first one I think is well, you got to have your solid. You have to have your navigation solidified. You have to have your core values, your mission, your vision, so you can attract the right people. If you don't have employees who are engaged in the mission and the vision of your company, and they're not aligned with your core values, they're never going to be engaged in what you're doing. It's impossible. Uh, absolutely. I mean, they need to know, you need to be able to tie for people. So if you're doing it right and you're hiring based on core values and 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 their affinity for for those core values those shared core values <clears throat> if you're hiring for that and you're onboarding people with that in mind you're already way ahead of the game but then if you can tie because now they're also jazzed up about your mission because you're really super clear about that too if you can tie how what they do relates to the servicing of your avatar you're 80 percent of the way to having your core processes built out in the right way and having automation align itself for you like these are the places we need to automate to make things better for our, our avatar if you can tie no one wants to go to a job where they just pull a lever all day and then leave and then someday they'll be dead or move on from their job and someone else come in and just pull the levers you need to know that i am doing these things for this purpose it's like it's like you don't join the military to run up and down hills with heavy things on your back you're doing that because you believe in freedom democracy american supremacy whatever i'm mean, being very america centric right now but you join this that thing for that and it requires of you hardships and sacrifice and effort for a massive why freedom beautiful so same thing uh, why am i pulling this lever why am i toiling away here at this when you look at your calendar you shouldn't go oh look at all this bullshit no it's got to be look at all that stuff i gotta do in order for this glorious thing that we're trying to do it makes it to it's totally different no one wants to just pile up bricks but if their job is to build a cathedral and they believe and they believe in a higher power and that this is their life's mission you can have a very happy productive bricklayer on the mission that you share with them to build this glorious cathedral but nobody just wants to lay bricks endlessly until they die which when they were building cathedrals was pretty much what you were signing up for right like, how long is it going to take us to build this thing oh i mean it's not that big really compared to some of the cathedrals i've seen like maybe 30 40 years yeah, well, we don't live that long in this century. So um, <laughs> I'll be laying bricks for the rest of my life and then just die. That Compelling. is a terrible, terrible slog. But if it's 
I will devote my life to the building of this cathedral that will stand in glorious purpose and as a, as a beacon to those who share my faith. Ah, now, here, now, now we're talking. That's some bricklaying that I want to get in on. This only happens when you get core values, mission, and vision correct. And the other thing I want to say about this, people say, well, there's lots of other things that you should be doing. Market analysis and the SWOT analysis and Bowman's strategic clock. And yeah, 25 other very good strategic planning tools and processes. Yeah, you're going to do that stuff too. But we can talk about that. We riff and jam with that in the, in the WIC. But to most people, if we could just get them to do core values, mission, and vision correctly, that's 80% of the lift with 20% of the work. The rest of the stuff will come when you're when you are disciplined enough and have the time and can understand it and can use those tools properly have at it but i'm not going to hand my son a, a a circular saw in <laughs> right off the bat let's work up to this because you're going to do more harm than good use correctly that tool is awesome but right now let's just understand carpentry at its basic yeah well what you said was very beautiful i don't want to take away from you pat on the back what you didn't say i think was more important and that was, I didn't hear you any, say anything about bonuses, compensation no. packages, vacation no. time. These are not really effective ways to boost employee engagement because if they're not engaged in the first place, then they're just taking those things because they have access to them. For years not and years and years and years, Disney paid at the 50th percentile, a little less than it. That's no small company. And how, and how, but how were they getting people lined up three deep for all of their jobs? Why are these people, were, were they so loyal, so engaged, so much so that Disney, you could pay a fortune, I know I did, to go to their leadership seminar and learn all about their, how they lead. And I was blown away by the small gestures and, and, and little um, acknowledgements of, of their cast members that got them loyalty and lift and engagement and empowerment. Why? At, at 50%, you can go anywhere and make more money. You could swing a cat and find a job where you can make more money. Why are you doing that? Because these people absolutely believed in the magic of Disney, the brand promise, their mission, their vision, their core values of oh, gushing. And they have people lined up for their jobs and they can I'm not saying you want to do this, but they can pay them less just because they're so and have them still engaged at a really high level in very brand specific ways, because we're not just paying people a lot of money and then telling them, now that you got your check, please go care about people. No, we're calling them cast members. We're telling them they're part of the show, this magic, this thing. If you sign up, that if that's your kind of jam and you sign up for that, you're engaged. So no, yeah. I didn't mention anything about bonuses or incentive programs or any of that nonsense yet, because you can get 80% of the way there by doing this other thing that benefits all other nine elements of your discipline as well. Imagine that. That's probably why we spend a lot of time in it. So well, let, I think Disney's a great example. And no, we're not advocating that you pay your people less and less or less than market value. But I'll get, let me give you another example. <clears throat> a a free example in terms of volunteers. So this actually uh, was present for me over the past few days. I'm I'm currently attending a Tony Robbins seminar, and it what struck me. My eyes are always open to this stuff, and I filter through the lens of harmonious. All of the people that work at the event, they have they wear T-shirts that on their back it says "Our work changes lives." You can't tell me those people are not tied to a mission and serving a, a greater purpose now here's the best part at these events it always blows my mind the senior leadership the trainers and the staff some are on the actual tony robbins team and they're paid employees but a lot of these people pay their own expenses to travel they work at these events for free and they're not really attending them they're serving the audience and the people who paid to be there if that is not dedication and engaged employee, in that case, a volunteer, I, I don't know what is. Yeah, I mean, it, that's it's amazing how far this can take you. And no, I'm not telling you to have free volunteers work for your company, but but look at the power behind a, a simple statement like that that ties them to the mission. The very fact that volunteerism exists in the world has to be acknowledged 
in the architecture to say, why would people work so hard for things for, right, no value? Well, they're getting enormous value from it, but they do it in part. The reason they're getting so much value from it <clears throat> is because they believe in that mission. Right? You're not, no one volunteer, unless you're, it's not really volunteer if you're part of a, you know, uh, penal, uh, um, you know, road work group, right? Like you're not cleaning up the road roadside trash if you've got the, you know, the orange vet, vest and and a, I don't know. I was gonna, I was gonna riff and jam about how they keep prisoners on the side of the road like old chain gang. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, if if you're a prisoner, you're not choosing to be there. But I mean, people do volunteer to do that. Volunteering, yeah. they do. But so volunteers, though, right? True volunteers, why are they there? They believe in the mission. They believe in this vision. They're trying. That's what you want. You want people, you, you may not get this depending on what your business is, but you want people so eager to show up that the money, that's what it says. Do what you love. The money will follow. They don't like processing the T19 report that you have them do, but they do love helping the people that you're trying to help if you hire them in the right way. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be, eager to show up and be engaged and they're going to tell you through and that's why we do employee satisfaction surveys they're going to tell you other things that they need to be more engaged and if they're truly the right kind of people engaged in your mission those other things that they are going to ask for are going to be tools that are in service of your mission not just i want to increase my christmas bonus it's not going to happen yeah, money's important, but getting people there and engaged by far more important. So let's let's tie this together then. The the three tips, I'll make this super simple. We've said all of them. One, you hire by a concrete set of core values. If you bring people in who are aligned with who your company is and who you are as a small business owner, that's that's the foundation. From there, you need to have a compelling mission that drives them to show up every single day and fight that battle before you get into any of the tactic stuff of compensation packages, pay, blah, 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 vacation. And third and foremost is the vision. You have to have a vision that pulls people forward. A mission's important because it's the day-to-day -day grind. Why am I here and, and why am I doing what I'm doing? But the vision is painting that picture of saying, when I accomplish this mission every single day, where will I get to? And that's your three, five, 10 year future. They have to have something to chase. So alignment, why chase the future? Yes, Sean. And the allocation, right? And then the here's where the power comes from linking the discipline. So you've done the core values, mission, vision, right? And you're linking it to lots of other places. But but when you link it to home, humans optimize for maximum, right? In a meaningful environment. When you do that, make that link, um, the important, the way to make that link, the most important way is to tie what they do to the outcome for the avatar. So this boring little report that you do, that you don't think matters, that goes to Tony in, right, in, in accounting and in, in procurement, and Tony does this, and then we do that, and then the client gets what they, they need. Oh, I'm an important piece of the value chain for this company. Yes. That's why that report matters. It may not seem like it does, but it is vital for us to help these people. Now I get it. Now I'm going to do that stupid report all day. And that is the, that activity is the tactical thing that you can do right now. And even if your core values, mission, and vision aren't the greatest, you do have people working for you right now. Maybe not everybody's engaged. Number one thing you can do right now in order to start to leverage those two disciplines across each other is to tie what they do with with the results for the client. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I we're going to wrap this up in like two minutes, but I definitely want to highlight one of our luminaries, one of our partners, because this is always the hardest part of working with companies of any size. You're going to have people who are not, let's focus on home, humans optimized. We may have the meaningful environment. That's, that's easy. And we have the humans, but the O is always the missing piece, the optimization. So we work with a company, his name is Wei, and the company name is Human Op Tech. They focus on human optimization. They got the O down pat. They are the best in the world at it. So Sean, can you speak to 
you know, how you've seen this play out maybe on a bigger scale and why it's still important to optimize the human, even though you have this strategic planning category in place? Yeah, the thing, yeah. So what Way beautifully does is um, get the, he helps you get the right people in the room. Um, one of the things that always would frustrate me, and, and trust me, there are very highly paid consultants who make a living off of banking on the fact that the changes they put in place are not going to stick around. And they're not going to stick around just because the way that corporate dynamics are. You train a leader down here. You're not impacting their core values, their mission very much. And you're trying to fix a siloed department. And you don't have a lot of control over who's already there and how they can maximize people. Now, from all the years I've done it, and this isn't unique to me, many consultants who who would operate in the space that I'm at, they am can thin slice just because they know people. They can decide, kind of get a gut feeling as who who can play in this new sandbox, who can't, who's going to be on the team going forward, who is a, an adopter of change, who's resistance to change. All those dynamics, we could map, map out a lot of it, but the solutions felt constrained sort of by their their overarching corporate political structure and some of the dy dynamics that are already there. I can't, I couldn't tell these people, I could tell them physical thing, activities to do that could reduce the chance for poor hires, but I could not predict it in the way that that scientifically that way could a lot of it was just me with gut and feel and once i was gone they were going to do whatever they naturally could do without a real uh scientific way to find those people and and i would slap on a a collage of different accepted things like Colby and IOPT and 16 personalities and all the different modalities and dynamics for trying to understand who people really are and then cobble together an answer as a way for them to scientifically do what I was thin slicing. Way has that all beat, hands down, in a way that takes my breath away. And I said, if we're not working with him, and how beautiful, because what he talks about his his main his their their core offer then is called orchestra because he tunes up the orchestra in your business and we are harmonious and so he tunes up the instruments and then we give them the sheet music to play and your their and the combination makes a business sing so that's what I got to say about way is that enough to say about way that I that honestly no he's that amazing we could talk about him for five hours but. Yeah, that's enough for this this episode. So we gave you two things, and they both He's centered got the around best lighting and sound ever. I mean, it's like yes, he does. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, just go watch his stuff. We'll watch him. I know he does Facebook lives oh, yeah. a couple times a week. Go watch Way. Go check him out. We'll link to him in the description here. Um, shout out to you, Way. Thank you for being an amazing partner. But the the two things we focused on was uh, th so the three tips to employee engagement. We did not give you any tactics, and then also when Sean was talking about Way, we did not talk about tactics again with uh, tips to uh, you know the three things you need to do to optimize your people. No, it's scientific, but more importantly than that, there's a framework and that's what the harmonious architecture is. It is the context to interpret everything that's happening in your business and also then with your people. So don't fall for the tactics. Don't fall for the people that say they have the one solution to grow your business, the be all end all. No, it all fits in an architecture and you need to have it in place to run your business and optimize your people effectively. So that's all I got to say about this. And if you want to join us on the inner circle, now that we've given you these, this foundation, let's optimize it. Let's get you to that next level in your business for next year. What if.com slash inner circle, or just reach out to you. We can help you. We can get you the bad assessment. Um, we'll get you to that next step, wherever, wherever you are, we can help you see the future. So come join us there. We'll see you on the next episode of the inner circle. Sean, we'll see you there. Let's go.